Good morning, students. I'm Dr. Geeta, Professor, Department of ENT, Sri Lakshmi Narayana Institute of Medical Science, Puducherry. Today, I'll be discussing about atrophic rhinitis. So this atrophic rhinitis is one of the most common chronic inflammatory condition of the nose and paranasal sinuses. This topic is of utmost important as an undergraduate student. This question, this topic is frequently asked as a, a long essay in your theory papers and also has been asked uh, frequently by the examiners in your clinical viva. So, what is atrophic rhinitis? The definition of atrophic rhinitis is, it is the chronic inflammation of the nose and paranasal sinuses, wherein there is atrophy of the mucus, as well as the nasal, you know, goblet secreting cells, as well as there is endarteritis. So first we will have to know what the definition is, what are the etiological factors, what are the basic clinical features, the radiological findings, what you see in the CT scan, or what are the complications which can happen when there is the atrophic rhinitis, most common differential diagnosis, and how you manage. So, as I said, atrophic rhinitis is chronic inflammatory disease of the nose and paranasal sinuses, wherein you see the atrophy of the mucosa lining the nose as well as paranasal sinuses. Not only the mucosa, there is also atrophy of the underlying bone. Okay. So it goes back uh, to the year 1875 when Dr. Spencer Watson first described about this condition. It was, uh, it, this condition is most common in females, especially in the menopausal women where there is deficiency of estrogen. Whenever there is hormonal deficiency, especially in women, you come across this condition. Dr. Gerhard Frankel in the year 1876, you know, he said that if there is a triad of atrophy of the nasal and paranasal mucosa, if there is a peter, and if there is nasal crust, if there is a triad of all these three, then it is definitely atrophic rhinitis that has to be considered. So there are other names which uh, goes after this condition. It's also called Oceana. It's also called a condition with merciful anosmia, and it's also called dry rhinitis. So atrophic rhinitis as such can be classified into primary and secondary. Primary atrophic rhinitis, the causes, you can remember it as a synonym, hernia, H-E-R-N-I-A, wherein hernia, in hernia, H stands for head retrieve. So atrophic rhinitis runs in the family. So if there is any uh, patient coming to you, when you're eliciting history, when you're taking a detailed history, never forget to ask if there is any other person in the family who is suffering from this particular condition. E in hernia stands for endocrinal disturbance, especially if there is any hypothyroidism, hypopetritism, or diabetes, or if there is any autoimmune disorder, any of these endocrinal disturbances can cause atrophic rhinitis. R in hernia stands for ratio factors. Yes, certain populations are very much prone for this particular condition. Southeast Asian Chinese population, they are more prone for it. And nutritional deficiency, yes, vitamin B6, B3, B12 deficiencies are associated with this primary type of atrophic rhinitis. N stands for infective. Infective in the sense, it's called atrophic rhinitis is also called Oceana because of this particular you know, organism causing atrophic rhinitis. It's called Klebsiella oceani. This is a gram-negative bacilli, which will actually cause infection that will lead into atrophy of the nasal and paranasal mucosa. 
I in Ernia stands for autoimmune process. Yes, some autoimmune conditions can cause atrophic rhinitis. So what are the causes of secondary atrophic rhinitis? Atrophic rhinitis, secondary to chronic granulomatous diseases like syphilis, leprosy, lupus vulgaris, uh, you know, uh, systemic uh, lupus erythematosus, uh, granulomatosis, uh, you know, granulomatosis, midline granuloma, all this can cause chronic specific infections can lead into secondary atrophic rhinitis. So there is another cause for secondary atrophic rhinitis. Whenever there is uh, you know, extensive surgery of the nose in the form of complete uh, removal of the turbinate, which is termed turbinectomy, especially in chronic allergic patients where they have hypertrophied inferior turbinate. In those cases, if you remove the turbinates completely, wherein the most of the resistance which is offered by the turbinates are removed, you feel as though there is paradoxical nasal obstruction and there is increased crusting and that may lead into roomy cavity. So there is secondary atrophic rhinitis. Severe or marked septal deviation to one side. Yes, there is increased airflow in the other side to compensate on the uh, blocked side. So this can be another cause for secondary atrophic rhinitis. So what pathology you come across in atrophic rhinitis? The microscopic change, if you see, there is destroyed cilia. Cilia is absent, decreased goblet cells. And there is endarteritis, which is happening here exactly. So there is no cilia and there is atrophy of the mucus or the goblet cells. There is squamous metaplasia also. The normal lining epithelium of the uh, respiratory mucosa is, as we all know, pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Because of atrophic rhinitis, the, there is change of the pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium into squamous epithelium. So there is squamous metaplasia. So yes, there is also atrophy of the olfactory mucosa. So atrophy of the nerve endings and the olfactory nerve causes anosmia, multiple anosmia. There is a particular terminology wherein the patient uh, does not feel or they cannot sense any sense of smell. It is some other person nearby or a neighbor or a relative who will tell that there is foul smelling. So they don't, they cannot smell anything. So that is called merciful anosmia. So what are the clinical features or the most common clinical presentation? This goes like this. Oh, it's, it's usually a females in our, you know, post-menopausal age, maybe around uh, 40 plus. Um, with the, she will come with the chief complaints of bilateral nasal obstruction and epistaxis. That is because of, you know, crust, which, uh, you know, she, she tries to remove, there can be bleeding. Mm, there is epistaxis, there is, there is bilateral nasal obstruction, there is foul smelling, which sometimes they, they may complain of, they may have headache, and, uh, you know, they will also have nasal stuffiness as such. Sometimes they may, you know, have that cacoxia. They, they may sense there is some abnormal perception of smell also, or sometimes anosmia also. So why there is nasal obstruction, even in the presence of roomy cavity? As I said, uh, if you go back to the pathophysiology, there is endarteritis. There is, uh, you know, uh, endarteritis of the nerve endings, the nerve endings are destroyed. And uh, even though there is rheumic cavity, there is no sensation of the air currents which will flow. So that's why they will have nasal obstruction. That's called paradoxical nasal obstruction, in fact. So what exactly uh, you come, you know, when you examine the patient with atrophic rhinitis, what are the clinical features? Sometimes when you examine the nose, external nose, there is low depressed uh, nasal frontal angle as well as bridge. That may be because of the atrophy of the nasal bones. When you do an anterior rhinoscopic examination, there is uh, atrophy of the turbinates. There is roomy cavity. 
and the epithelium or the nasal mucosa if you see can be congested sometimes you can see a lot of crust with yellowish green or greenish foul smelling discharge or there can be you know dried discharge which can be in the form of crust sometimes you may also see a perforation so sometimes there can be congestion sometimes there can be a pale atrophic mucosa so it all depends on the stage with which the patient is coming to you so these are some of the signs when you elicit or when you do an anterior rhinoscopic examination you may find all these features so you get a roomy cavity both uh, nos uh, both the nasal cavity and then you have greenish discharge or there can be a dried crust and you can see that the mucosa is pale and sometimes you can also see a perforation especially in the cartilaginous part of the nasal septum coming to the radiological finding yes one of the most common investigation which we uh, get done is ct of the nose and paranasal sinuses non contrast so what you see here is mucoperiosteal thickening of the paranasal sinuses loss of definition of osteomedial complex is the atrophy is so that the abnormal anatomy is completely distorted and you can't exactly define where exactly the osteomedial complex is there is enlargement of nasal cavity that is roomy cavity that is because of erosion and going of lateral nasal wall atrophy of inferior as well as the middle turbinates there is there is hypoplastic maxillary sinus you know a small very small maxillary sinus so these are some of the ct images of the atrophic rhinitis patients this is a normal patient if you can see this is atrophied patient empty nose syndrome maybe this is a post op patient who has undergone surgery you know a radical procedure or you know, sometimes it can be a you know, simple uh, atrophic rhinitis where there is hypoplasia of the maxillary sinus you can see a very small contracted maxillary sinus only the inferior turbinate is there middle turbinate is totally atrophied you know you can see very very tiny atrophied middle turbinate the you know, bowing of the lateral nasal wall and you here you can see atrophied middle turbinate septum inferior turbinate everything is so much atrophied this is hypoplastic classically you can see in both the second slide or second image you can see a hypoplastic maxillary sinus so what are the complications which can arise because of atrophic rhinitis yes it can affect your middle ear since there is atrophic rhinitis we all know rhinitis rhinitis can cause distension to dysfunction leading into middle ear pathology mainly asom or secretory otitis media or chronic otitis media any of this can happen in the ear in the nose and paranasal sinuses is the patient may have recurrent epistaxis and sometimes they may have pharyngitis and that may affect you know also cause mental uh, disturbance like they may have uh, headache and uh, they may have migraine headache in in fact they don't like to socialize you know they think that it's a stigma and there is some severe issue happening and so they don't go out usually yes this may cause sinusitis rhinitis can cause sinusitis as we all know it can cause um, pharyngitis you can see you know tonsillitis pharyngitis happening because if there is a klebsiella oceana it's a bacterial infection so that the discharge can be you know swallowed or when there is post nasal drip that can definitely cause pharyngitis and tonsillitis yes as i said they may not uh, like to socialize and they have kind of uh, mental disturbance this last image if you see is since there is no sensation in the nasal cavity they are more prone for infection by nasal miasis i mean maggots this is very debilitating it's quite dangerous to have maggots uh, because once you see maggots you you don't know when it can erode the bone 
uh, a cribriform plate and when it causes meningitis. So it's like very difficult to predict what can happen, where these maggots can, you know, breach and what organs or which structure it is going to involve. It can uh, pierce the or erode the lamina and involve the orbit. It can uh, erode the cribriform plate and it can enter the brain. So any of the complications can happen with atrophic rhinitis. So what are the important differential diagnoses which you should keep in mind? Yes, as I said, you have primary and secondary atrophic rhinitis. Primary, usually it is uh, idiopathic or it can be because of Klebsiella oceana or some uh, autoimmune disease. Whereas secondary, we all know it is because of chronic granulomatous disease like rhinosporidosis, rhinoscleroma syphilis, leprosy, or SLE or vaginalis, any of this. You have to uh, rule out all this by doing a battery of tests, laboratory tests, radiological and histopathological. Definite diagnosis will be histopathological. So you can see rhinosporidiosis here, which you, you know can cause atrophic rhinitis uh, on a longer time. Yes, this is uh, your inferior turbinate septum and a rhinolith, a long-standing rhinolith or a foreign body in the nose, uh, may, uh, you may get confused with uh, atrophic rhinitis. Yes, coming to the treatment aspect, most important treatment here is medical therapy. If the patient comes at an early stage and there is also a surgical option. Coming to the medical therapy, you have both local as well as systemic. Most important here in atrophic rhinitis, alkaline nasal torsion. That is, you know, you have to irrigate the uh, nose with saline so that you remove the crust and discharge whatever is there so that there will be, uh, you know, the patient will not have any crust. And once the crust is removed, maybe uh, the patient will not have recurrent epistaxis, one thing. And when you do doushi, you will be providing moisture, you know, and you will, the pH of the mucosa can also be changed by doing so. So it's a mixture of sodium bicarbonate, sodium biborate, and sodium chloride. All the three in the ratio of one is to one is to two is mixed into 80 ml of lukewarm water. And then you have to clean the way it is shown in the diagram. You know, you have to go near the sink, take one nozzle, a sterile container. You can, uh, with the nozzle attached, or you get a ready solution nowadays called nasal wash kit, wherein everything will be provided. And you have to maintain, you know, you have to uh, do all this doshi only under sterile condition. At least twice or thrice a day, this has to be followed. Next comes glucose in glycerin. You know, you get it uh, as a drops, you know, nasal drops. This is local treatment. 25% is mixed in glycerin. And uh, this actually will, uh, you know, it's a bacterial lactic activity wherein there is uh, alkaline pH. And, and so there will be no organisms, you know, will be grown. So you have chloramphenicol and streptomycin drops also. You have estradiol spray also. All these are alternative things which can be used. Estradiol spray, as I said, atrophic rhinitis is common in postmenopausal women who have uh, less of estrogen content. So when you give an estradiol spray, they may definitely do well. Another local antibiotic, since we know that atrophic rhinitis is caused by Klebsiella, which is a gram negative bacilli. So for that, you can give chemidicin as a local antibiotic nasal drop. Placental extracts, yes, injection weekly or twice a week, intramuscular. Uh, yes, some of them, please, I mean, uh, do prescribe this injection. And since placenta, uh, placental extracts have a lot of uh, growth factors and uh, you know, anti-inflammatory things and uh, it will help in healing. Mm, this has been used uh, by some of the practitioners and they are giving good results with this. Yes, this is another additional option 
only problem we are is uh, there are chances of you know transmission of um, diseases communicable disease one thing or there can be another issue here will be the cost it is uh, some of the patients may not be affordable especially the rural population may not afford potassium iodide yes in the form of tablets or in the form of you know nasal drops has been tried systemic when you want to give some tablets uh, orally you can always give a broad spectrum antibiotic like streptomycin 1 g a day intramuscular weekly you can also give vitamin a yes vitamin a helps in healing and then some vasodilators all these are you know depends again on the severity depending upon the age factor the general condition of the patient whether they have any comorbidities or not because streptomycin itself is nephrotoxic Uh, and auto toxic so you have to monitor things so these are the treatment options again when i say when you are treating any patient it's not that whatever options are there it has to be applied you have to actually treat the patient on an individual basis some patients will have some problem some patients will have another problem so accordingly the patient will be treated so what are the surgical options which we have so again when we are talking of surgical options again here most of the patients uh, may not give consent for surgery they may not accept the things so easily so one of the surgeries which is most commonly practiced is yangs and modified head surgery yes there are of course other surgical options like wilson's procedure where you, you just divert the you know stenson's uh, duct and uh, sublabially you will have to place it in the lateral wall so that there is uh, you know epithelialization or wound healing happening so basically you give rest there witmax operation other volume reduction procedures where you implant uh, something there in the floor and uh, of the nasal cavity by a sublabial approach and you can also go for some denervating operations so this is yangs wherein the uh, nasal cavity will be closed on an alternative basis first one six months you go, uh, you have to close the entire nasal cavity by elevating the flaps on either side the vestibular skin on either side vestibular skin as well as the lateral nasal wall so the skins are elevated two flaps are raised and then you have to close it completely so this is yangs operation so this is what elevate the flap medially and laterally and then you have to proceed so a uh, modified um, yangs surgery is when you just leave behind a 3 mm of an opening in the midline that has an advantage of you know visualizing the nasal mucosa whatever is happening so a quick note for the treatment of atrophic rhinitis you just want to remember it in this way you can uh, you know remember a synonym atrophy in young girls a stands for antibiotic spray t stands for deflon based r is remove crust O is steroidal therapy. P stands for potassium iodide placental extracts and irrigation. In insertion of fat or cartilage. Y Yangs operation. G glucose and glycerin and G girls more and females. That's what I was telling you that atrophic rhinitis is common in young girls. That is before puberty and after menopause. So just remember. that this is one of the frequently asked question in your theory paper as well as in viva uh, so this session will be uh, concluded here let us come back with another slide sometime later thank you